Illustrative Math, Algebra 2, Unit 2, Lesson 11 is called Finding Intersections. So our goal is I can find the solution to a system of polynomial equations. We're actually going to do this two ways. Um, we're going to show you how to do it graph with graphing. And then we're going to also show you how to do it with algebra. Okay? All right, so warm up here. We want to mentally identify a point where the graphs of the two functions intersect if one exists. So this is a little challenging here, but um, good review. So f of x equals x. That's a line because it's x to the first. It's linear, okay? So um, the y, remember, a linear is y equals mx plus b. B is your y-intercept, m is your slope. So if this is y equals, it's like 1x plus 0, really. Let me rewrite that a little sloppy. It's kind of like your y-intercept is at 0, and you rise 1, run 1. So you get a line that kind of looks like that. And then this is just y equals 3. That's a constant. So that's right there at y equals 3. So it looks like these intersect right here at 3, 3. Okay? Try your best to do it without a calculator. This is this is a review activity here. So, you know, if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. But just make sure you're understanding what I'm doing. All right, so let's look at this one. This one, if I multiplied the highest power in each factor, I'd get positive 1x squared, right? So that means my end behavior is like this. Okay, so if I were to graph this, my x-intercepts, this one would give me negative 3. This one would give me 3. And I know I'm going up. Whoops. Right side up, left side up, and it's going to dip down somewhere like that. And then this one is k equals 0. So that's just a, or k of x equals, so that's a horizontal line. So your graphs intersect right there at the two x-intercepts. So negative 3, 0, and 3, 0 on the right. <clears throat> okay, next one here. This is kind of the same thing that we just graphed. So I'm going to put my x-intercept here at negative 3. This one here at 3. And then right there. Now this is a line. So this is right here. I'll do it in a different color. This is y equals 1x minus 3. So m is 1 over 1, rise over run. And my y-intercept's negative 3. So, rise 1, run 1. So, your line looks something like that. Now, my picture's not very good because it looks like they intersect at all these points. But I think my graph's a little off. I think my parabola was supposed to come maybe more like that. And we know that this point right here was, this was x equals negative 3. And then this one was x equals 3. So we know this point, they for sure intersect. We don't have to find the other one. It just says find one point where they intersect. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to say 3, 0, because we could tell that both of these go through that point. <clears throat> Over here, this one has x-intercept of negative 5. And that has 5. And again, if I were to <clears throat> multiply this out, I'd get 1x squared for my first term. So my end behavior goes up and up. <clears throat> so I get some sort of like parabola. I don't really, whoops, I don't really know how low I can, I'm going to dip, but somewhere down there. <clears throat> this one has x-intercepts of negative 3 and 3, kind of like we just did. Same type of end behavior. It's 
So you can tell that one, it, it doesn't look like they're ever going to touch. So I think this one is no <clears throat> intersection, right? Because I think it's on the inside. Okay. <clears throat> Looks like this one's going to get wider. And this one's going to stay on the inside. <clears throat> All right, so before we go on to the next thing, I got a little slide here, um, combining like terms, um, 3x plus x. There's a one in front of that x. So if these match up here, your variables, you can add the coefficients. So basically, we always just add them up and say, okay, it's 4x, right? Well, what you're really doing here is you skip a step where you actually take the coefficients and you add them together, okay? We do three plus one, and then you keep the x the same. We don't ever write this because it's it's kind of like you can do it in your head. You do three plus one, and you get the four x. We just go right here. <clears throat> same thing over here. You know, we, we have x and x, so we add the coefficients. So that extra step would be five plus eight times x, which gives us the 13 x. So we usually end up here but this step here, I want to make sure that we know how to do it, okay? Because now over here, it's kind of the same idea here. Think of the x plus 2 as being like your x over here. And then think of the x plus 1 at like kind of like your 3. And then there's like a 1 in front of here. Think of that 1 as being like your 1 over here, okay? <clears throat> So if I were to add these together in the front, it'd be x plus 1 plus 1 times x plus 2. Now, why is that useful? Because we can now get it all multiplication. So I can, com I can add these ones together on the inside of the parentheses. So I get x plus 2 times x plus 2. And if you wanted to write it as x plus 2 squared, you could. <clears throat> so down here, same idea here. Think of the x minus 3 here, since those match up, just like your x and your x match up. All right, think of the x minus 3 kind of like your x. <clears throat> and think of the x plus 1 kind of like your 5, and the x plus 2 kind of like your 8. So we're going to, in the front, we're going to add these two together, x plus 1 plus x plus 2. We're going to combine those two, two um, really like kind of coefficients. And then we keep the x minus 3 the same. And I can simplify this here. x plus x is 2x. 1 plus 2 is 3. All right. So very similar when it's just a number, a constant, and a variable um, when it's binomials. <clears throat> as long as these match up. You see, you got the x minus 3s here and the x plus 2s here. When they match up, you can combine them just like like terms. Okay, so um, if I want to know where these functions intersect, we want to know basically where a of x equals b of x. That's where they intersect. So if I wanted to do this algebraically, I would set them equal. I'd say, okay, x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals x minus 2. And then I'm going to move this x minus 2 over to the left. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So I'm going to get x plus 2, x minus 2, minus, because I move it over to the left, I subtract from both sides equals 0. So now it's kind of just like we did on that last slide that I added there. Think of these as being your x. And then there's really like kind of like a one in front of here too. So think of it like you're going to add the coefficients x plus 2 plus negative 1. And then you keep the one that matches the same. So that would give me x 2 minus 1 is 1. That give me something like that. Equals 0. Okay. <clears throat> so we go over here. <clears throat> For each pair of polynomials given, 
find all points of intersection of their graph. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we have to set them equal. <clears throat> and then this one's a little different because um, I don't have it in factored form. So this one, I can move the seven over here. <clears throat> And then this one, I can square root both sides, and I get x equals positive and negative 3. When you have to insert a square root <clears throat> into the problem, if, if they didn't give you a square root, you're going to have two roots. You're going to have the positive and negative root. Okay. Now, it says find all points of intersection. Um, so I could plug this 3 back in to get the y-coordinate. So really, this one's probably the easiest because it's y equals 2. So we know this is a horizontal line. So you're going to get 3, 2 and negative 3, 2 as your answers. Now, if I plug 3 in here, you still get 2. And if I plug negative 3 in here, I get 2. So like, you know, I'll just go ahead and do it. If I plug in the negative 3 squared minus 7, I get 9 minus 7. I still get 2. Okay. <clears throat> so this one, set them equal. I'm going to put parentheses there. I'm going to move this over to the left. <clears throat> so I have to subtract. So now I combine my like terms. So it's going to be x plus 7 plus negative 1 <clears throat> times x minus 4. Combine those like terms. And there we go. So each one of these equals zero. So we'd get negative six and positive four. <clears throat> so my point of intersection, if I plug the negative six in, probably this one would be the easiest to plug it in. You know, I get negative six minus four. If I plug it in for x, that's going to give me negative 10. And then four, if I plug four in here, four minus four would give me zero. Okay. <clears throat> Set them equal. Move this over to the left, so I subtract. And the x minus 4 stays the same, and we combine the coefficients. So it's x plus 7. And then really, it's like I almost distribute this negative. So it's minus 2x. And then when I distribute it there, it's minus 5. So that's what we get. And we can combine some terms here. So x minus 2x would be negative x. 7 minus 5 is 2 so you set each factor equal to 0 so if I set x minus 4 equal to 0 we get x equals 4 and then if I set negative x plus 2 equal to 0 I get I'll move the x over so I add that to both sides x equals 2 so 2 and 4 are the x values how do you find the y's? Well, you got to plug them back in. So let's see. I'll plug them into this one. You can plug them into either one. So if I plug in the 2 there, I'm going to get 2 plus 7 is 9. Just right over here, 9. And then 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So that gives me negative 18 when I multiply those. Plug the 4 in there. 4 plus 7 is 11. 4 minus 4 is 0. So that's going to be 0. And there we go. <clears throat> now, the next one is a little trickier because you're still going to follow kind of the same idea here. You're going to set these equal. And this one's actually a little bit harder. We're not going to be able to use that technique that we have. Um, so. 
So <clears throat> what you could do here is you could, since none of these match up, there are other ways to do it. We just haven't got to it yet in our textbook. So what I would say is I would multiply this out. So if you make a box and multiply it out, you're going to get X squared minus 7X minus 8. Now, when I say make a box, it's X and 1, X and negative 8. You multiply those, multiply those. And then you combine these like terms to get the negative 7X. So that's how I get that. And over here, I get X squared minus 2X minus 8. So the only thing we're going to do right now is we're going to say, oh, wait, the y-intercepts are the same on both graphs. So we know that the y-intercept is negative 8. So the x-coordinate, think about the y-axis here. If the point is down here at negative 8, the x-coordinate is 0. Okay. So that one was a little trickier because it's not following the same pattern that we had before. <clears throat> All right, so here's some functions. Use graphing technology to find a value of x that makes p of x <clears throat> equal q of x true. So what I need to do is I need to go into my graphing calculator. I need to graph this function here and this function. I need to find where they cross, okay? So go ahead, and if you want to pause the video and graph them and give it a try, that would be fine. I'm going to do it right now. <clears throat> Okay, so my first is, <clears throat> I'm just going to say y equals 5x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x. <clears throat> and the next one is y equals 5,640. Now, obviously, my, my axis needs to change. I need to make my y, you know, I'll just say start at negative 100, and I need to go up to at least like 6,000, maybe make it go by thousands, all right, and then I can kind of move it around, and there we go, I have a point of intersection, so it's 10 for the x coordinate, and obviously the y coordinate is 5,640, because um, <clears throat> it's a horizontal line, so so x equals 10. For the x value at the point of an intersection, what can you say about the value of that? So what's this quantity here? It's kind of like we took the two functions, set them equal, okay? And then we move this over, so I minus it from both sides, kind of like I had been doing. So we end up getting exactly what they're asking for. 5x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x minus 5,640. Obviously, that's going to be equal to 0 because there's nothing left over here. So if I plug 10 into this function into my calculator, I should, based off of this equation and what it's saying here, I should get 0. So um, what would be the value? Um, it would equal 0. Okay. And if you want, plug x um, 10 in for this, for x here, here, and here, and you should get zero. So what does your answer suggest is a possible factor? So if I plug in 10 and I get zero, that would suggest that x equals 10 is my possible zero. Okay. Um, so my factor would be x minus 10 would be a possible factor. Okay, remember the zero and the factor are always going to be opposite there. All right, write your own polynomial m of x of degree three or higher. Use graphing technology to estimate the values of x and make m of x and q of x true. Okay, so q of x was the five, q of x is the 5,000 
640. I'm just going to say m of x is, I don't know, x cubed plus 9. So I'm going to go over here to my graph. I'll keep this one on the bottom. I'm going to change this to x cubed plus 9. And and I'm going to get my answer here is 17.791. Okay, so that's my zero. And then my factor would be x minus 17.791. Okay, that would be my factor. Now, obviously, this is rounded, but um, <clears throat> for the sake of what we're doing, that is what we'll use. Okay, so finding intersections. So if I want to find these two intersections, we set them equal. Now, this one's kind of easy because it's just a basic, like, pre-algebra equation. Um, I don't need to do any crazy factoring here, so I'm just going to combine those. I'm going to move this over here, and actually they end up canceling. So I end up with 2x on the left and 0 on the right. Divide by 2, I get x equals 0. So if I plug 0 into either one of these functions, I plug it in here, 0 plus 5, I get 5. Okay? And if I were to graph these, these are both going to be lines. That's where they would intersect. Now these ones x plus 5 equals x minus 2 times x plus 5. So I'm going to minus this whole thing from both sides. Okay, obviously these cancel, so I have 0 on the right. I'll put the x plus 5 in parentheses. All right, so you see here the x plus 5s match up, so we're going to add the coefficients, okay? So in front is 1, and then think of it as minus this whole thing, so we have to distribute the negative here, so minus x plus 2, and then the ones that match, the parentheses that match up, you keep them the same. So what do I get here? I get negative x plus 3. times x plus 5. So if I set each factor equals 0, this one's really easy. I'm going to get x equals negative 5. This one might have to do some scratch work here. I'm going to add x to both sides. So I get 3 equals x. Um, I probably want to get the point that they intersect at, so I'll put the x there. If I plug, probably easier to plug it into this one here, so negative 5 plus 5 0, 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay. Um, important to understand the shape here, too. This is a line, and then this is going to be some sort of parabola because it's x squared. So a line and a parabola could intersect more than once, whereas these two here, these were two lines. So two lines are only going to intersect at one point. Okay. All right, so our goal, I can find the solution to a system of polynomial equations. You can do them graphically and algebraically. All right, and just for a cool down here, we want to know where they intersect, so we set the two functions equal. All right, um, I'm going to move this over here to the left. And I get x plus 5 times x minus 4 minus x plus 5 equals 0. So this one's a little tricky because it's out of order. So think of the x minus 4 as being your coefficient. So maybe if I rewrite it, because this is multiplication. So it doesn't matter the order that you write those. You might see it a little bit easier here. 
and you see that these match up. So your coefficients are x minus 4 and then minus 1. And then you keep the parentheses that match the same. Combine those, I get x minus 5, x plus 5. So x equals 5. And then over here, x equals negative 5. So I need to get, whoops, need to get the y coordinate that goes with it. So you can plug these two into either one of these equations. This one's probably the easiest. So 5 plus 5 would give me 10. And then same thing, negative 5 plus 5, but this time it gives you 0. Those are your solutions. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.